All right, so I'll be talking about uh, one of the projects I did last summer with the ARIA team. It's called as Ego Humans. It's fundamentally a data set project, but let me uh, motivate this first. So uh, there have been many 3D human data sets so far. Uh, 3DPW from Munich, Panoptic Studio from CMU, very popular, Human 3.6M, 3DHP. However, they are mostly captured in indoor settings. 3DPW is the only outdoors 3D data sets, uh, but uh, it contains at most two humans in a sequence. Apart from, apart from this, the activities uh, showcased in the data set are slow, like standing, talking, walking, etc. Also on a minor note, uh, from the aesthetic perspective, it's about time we replace them. You can see the video resolutions are pretty low. So yeah, to address all of these issues, uh, we constructed the Ego Humans uh, data set. This took around eight months to complete. I just wrapped it up recently. Uh, these are some visuals from the data set. As you can see, we are no longer constrained to indoor settings, unlike previous works. And uh, we made it a point to focus on dynamic activities, like fast-paced sports, like playing volleyball, fencing, frisbee, soccer, uh, badminton, tennis, playing tag. Uh, some interesting indoor sequences as well. Most importantly, our activities are completely unchoreographed. There is no step-by-step -step script uh, given to subjects on how fast or slow they should move, and the actors are specifically, they're just performing a specific task or playing a game, and uh, this allows us to capture the natural motion of the actors. So uh, what enables us to go in the wild? Uh, our capture setup is very simple. Uh, it consists of many tripods and GoPros and uh, the ARIA glasses on these subjects as the ego view. And uh, this allows us, ARIA glasses, uh, state-of-the-art camera calibration, allows us to take our 3D metric system and then establish in any location. And that allows us to generate like high-quality 3D ground truth. So this is just an overview of our typical capture setup. Uh, Ego glasses, as I said, GoPros running at 4K, 60 FPS, capturing the static person view. And these are the annotations we provide. So pretty much everything, bounding box, plus tracking ID, 2D poses, 3D poses, and then also meshes. And to get to the point of generating all these annotations, these are sort of the sub-problems you have to solve. Uh, this is the visual schema. So first, I'll talk about data capture. This is uh, the multi-view visualization of one of our sequences, uh, volleyball sequence. I'm showing around nine cameras out of the 15 cameras. Everything is time synchronized, and the cameras ensure complete 360 coverage of the activity. And this is another example of people playing Frisbee. This is the ARIA view. Uh, all the left stereo, right stereo cameras, along with the RGB camera. And all the actors in a scene are wearing ARIA. So the ego views are also time synchronized. This is like a four person 2v2 volleyball match. You're seeing four ARIA views simultaneously here. So once you have done the data capture and then solve for time synch synchronization, uh, to obtain good 3D annotations, you need to uh, get good camera calibration. And this is the hardest and the most challenging step. So first, let's talk about the moving cameras. You can see this is the six DOF camera poses for the entire sequence on the right in yellow, and the 3D scene points in the left. Uh, the ego glasses are calibrated, as you know, using VIO. And uh, unless you do some really fast motion, or uh, maybe trip your leg, uh, generating huge motion blur, I think VIO-based calibration works pretty great. Uh, once you do this, you need to align all the ARIA glasses and the third-person static cameras uh, in a single consistent global coordinate system. To that, we, uh, for this, we use structure for motion, a giant structure for motion optimization, get all the cameras in a single coordinate system. And because ARIA glasses all have IMU sensors in, we can do this in like a metric coordinate system. So. Unlike previous work, we can anchor our global coordinate system to a metric unit. This allows us to generalize across 3D setups. Next up, so once you have done camera calibration, 
uh, you need to solve for uh, detection and tracking. Uh, we we saw that like off-shelf tracking methods do not consistently perform well in like crazy conditions. So, uh, as all the humans in our sequence wear the ARIA glasses, we already know their identities and the 3D location, right? This gives us a good region proposal for Barney box detection and tracking for free. Uh, this is like a good illustration here. As you can see, even in extreme or complete occlusion, uh, look for the left image here. We can still detect and track humans, the red Barney box in the left. All right, so once you have done for, for tracking, uh, this uh, next step is getting 2D poses per view. Uh, this is straightforward. We use like an off-shelf state-of-the-art model trained on Cocoa dataset to do per view 2D pose estimation. And then finally get all these 2D poses per view in 3D using triangulation. So conceptually, this is pretty straightforward, triangulate with Ransat. But there are tons of heuristics here and post-processing steps because you can have noisy predictions per view. So yeah, detect outliers, error correct, all of that. So uh, this is one of the visualization of one of my favorite sequences. We have Jacob and Chris fencing it out. And I'm showing the final 3D pose reprojected to the camera view. As you can see, our poses are robust to dynamic human motion. And because it is multi-view, robust to any kind of occlusion. So you can get this kind of see-through effect. This is the multi-view visualization of the same sequence. Uh, yeah, as a, uh, you will observe that even in case of complete occlusion, uh, we can still extract accurate key points. So those were static cameras with moving humans. Here are moving cameras capturing moving humans. Again, 3D pose reprojected to all the ego views. We can see all the three area views here along with the stereo perspective. Next up, so this is the final step, obtaining meshes from the 3D key points. Uh, we use the SMPL body model. It's a nice parametric body model to represent 3D meshes, low dimensional and we fit it to the 3D poses. Uh, yeah, three-stage optimization, just first optimize for the root and translation, and then fit for the body shape, and then optimize for the pose, and just keep doing it iteratively. All right, so this is the mesh visualization of a four-people sequence, outdoors, playing tag. You can see people are running, abruptly changing motion direction, and we can capture really subtle movements in arms and legs uh, without using any markers and outdoors. And uh, that was like a completely virtual view of the 3D scenes. Uh, let's see how good does the 3D match with the pixels in the image. So I'm showing the old layer. Here's the fitted SMPL mesh reprojected back to the camera views. On the left is the third person view. On the right is the first person view. As you can see, even with fast, Camera motion or mesh estimates are pretty good. And yeah, this is the multi-view uh, visualization of the same sequence, all the nine cameras, again. And the same drill from the ARIA views. Cool. Uh, this is the volleyball sequence. So yeah, you will see players doing all sorts of crazy things, jumping, diving. And the area view, all the four players together. And the tag sequence. and the ARIA view for the same tag sequence. All right, yeah, so that was some of the sequences we have. Once you have collected all this data, you can now train a model to uh, reason from the ego perspective. So I'll not go into the details of this here, but we basically train a 3D tracker, uh, which can just uh, do tracking just from the ARIA view. So given left, right, and RGB image, uh, it can output human meshes 
but uh, across time, so with human identities as well. And here is a comparison of our model with baseline tracking methods. So for the ego view, due to huge camera motion, you will often see uh, that 2D methods, uh, they suffer from a lot of ID switches. But our method is able to uh, le fix those ID switches because of uh, it being fundamentally 3D. <coughs> And yeah, next up, this is this is like a sneak peek into the next follow-up project we are doing. So this is the uh, the prediction of uh, off-shelf method we have uh, on crazy scenarios like where there is extreme human-human contact, for example, hugging here. Uh, as you can see, everything fails. Uh, current methods are not designed to handle human-human contact. And this is another example which we are doing, where there is like a grappling sequence. Two people are wrestling. So the setup is similar. We have static cameras, but both of the players are wearing ARIA. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, this is ongoing right now. I, we hope to uh, make some progress here. But what you are seeing right now is the current state of our results here for this sequence. You can see there are no obvious misses, as you saw with the off-shelf methods. But uh, there is still interpenetration error or uh, yeah, collision. So. Uh, we are working on improving this right now. Hope to show it very soon. Cool. Yeah, that's about it. Please check out our project page or the code and data. Thanks.